everybody. This is A.M. Lewis, and I'm coming to you this week to spit hot fire like Dylon um, for this week's This Week in Fuckery. Um, as Franzi would say, anyone who knows me knows that I love a good message t-shirt. Um, I own a variety of them, and some of them are funny, some of them are matter of fact, um, and some of them are political. And because Facebook is a real keystroke hustler in my life, it knows this about me and it stays posting advertisements for, you know, a variety of teas. Um, and one that consistently pops up in my feed reads this. Dear racism, I am not my grandparents. Sincerely, these hands. Now, when I first saw this shirt, which was a little while ago, probably some months ago, I felt a way, but I couldn't quite determine what that way was. I just knew I didn't like it. But as I've continued to see this pop up, I I realize that, you know, no, we're not our grandparents. We're not our gra- we're not our parents. We're not our great grandparents. Like we're not made of the same stuff. We're not our ancestors, period. Um, say for a few of us, our activism involves words and we don't sacrifice. We are spoiled and pampered, and it is by virtue of our ancestors. It is by virtue of their perseverance, their sacrifice, sacrifice, and their very blood. We are the generation who gets into petty beefs on Twitter and possess infinite levels of bravery when it's behind the screen and behind the keyboard. We wouldn't, we, we can't get a petition together, a boycott together, just to not shop for a finite period of time. I don't know why we think we could get it together to boycott public transportation that would keep us from getting where we need to go in an expedient manner. And which would mean we would have to walk miles. That's not us. And anybody who says it is, is fooling themselves and or being dishonest. And it's just, it's just abjectly foolish and anachronistic to think that if we could hop into some type type of, time traveling glory into slavery slavery or the Jim Crow era, we would be a bigger, badder version of the ancestors we speak of. Um, our ancestors didn't refuse to throw hands because they were too timid or too kowtowing or too willing to toe the line. They didn't do it because their very survival depended on it. They were strategic. They weren't scary. They were smart. It's because of this smartness that we are here today. It's because of this intelligence that we're even here today. So to wear some kind of T-shirt, to make it look, though, to give the impression that sends the message that we are somehow a bigger, badder version of those who came before us is a lie. It's a lie. And it's fuckery. And I just wanted to share that with y'all this week in fuckery. Thank you for tuning in to Tackling Tom Foolery. I am Malika Rogers. I am Lewis. I'm Franzi Moore. How's everybody doing today? I'm actually good. Okay. I'm a good day today. Good. I'm doing okay. I feel decent. I have a glass of wine. That always makes me feel a little bit better. It's hump day. And that's a good thing. Better than Monday. Yeah. So, okay, let's get started with some highs and lows. Checking out the fellas, the highs and lows. Or usually the order we do them, lows and highs. I like to (laughs) save the highs for last. I like to go out high. Well, I kind of prefer the same thing, but I don't know. I like to say it as highs and lows, but I like to give the order as lows and highs. highs and lows. Plus, we need, BBD does not sing checking out the fellas, the lows and the highs. So, you know. Nobody says that. Let's talk about the lows and highs. <laughs> no one says that. Uh, who's going first? <laughs> go first, Malika. Go, go, go. Mm, no. Um, That's go rude. Malika. Go, Malika. That is not the that is not the natural order of the no program. Natural order. That's um, my low. Malika will there go is first. A natural That's order. My low today. Womp womp. Mm, you'll be all right. You'll be all right because there'll be a high following that to make it all better. Uh, the 
I don't really have a particular low. I mean, there are lots of things I found disturbing, silly, ridiculous, et cetera, uh, during the course of this week, during the course of every week. But I don't have a specific low. Uh, so my high that I want to talk about is the trailer for Black Panther. Uh. I did not... I did not give any dams about the NBA finals. Um, congrats to Golden State. I didn't care who won one way or the other. I don't even really watch. But the highlight of the NBA finals for me was that trailer. I am looking forward to Black Panther. I was already looking forward to mm-hmm. it anyway. But having seen um, the trailer made it that much more exciting and it was so black, blackety black. It put me in such a good mood to see all of that. And people were salty about it, of course. There have been some dissenters. And, oh, they have him looking so militant sitting in that throne. He's, they're trying to make him look like Kiwi Newton sitting in his wicker chair with his weapons. But I'm like, if you're a king, isn't a throne where you normally sit? I mean, last I uh, knew about... Uh, royalty they sat on a throne um so let's just (laughs) for your president (laughs) well a throne yeah his is except his is probably porcelain but right (laughs) right totally so um anyway (laughs) people were salty (laughs) about all that um blackness and how dare he be sitting there looking like royalty on a throne a king indeed. And then I must admit, um, aside from the actual trailer itself being exciting, um, all the people being mad at the trailer, it was also a high for me because seeing them with their little indignant fists all balled up, shaking them at the sky, put me in a better mood. I like it when people get angry about stuff that they can't stop. You can't stop it. That shit is coming out in February, <laughs> Black History Month. <laughs> anyway. So that that was my uh, super black ass high for this week. Franzi, your highs and lows. Um, okay, well, my low is sort of related to that. It's just kind of an all encompassing in a way. It's a continuation from last week. I guess it's just a different conversation. And I, I was struggling to think of a word to describe these people, but um, I can't really think of it so i'll just tell you um this is about people who fancy themselves Mm -hmm. liberals you know allies to the cause um and i think this i think about this in relation to i think it happened with wonder woman again this week um theresa may and even bill maher with Mm. the sort of Mm -hmm. atonement show you know and again with black panther and i think if things get tricky with you and you revert to a slur, then you really need to rethink your position. And I think there are too many people whose friendship is contingent upon people liking them. And it has nothing to do with the reason that you should align yourself with something. You know, I think it's really important. Like, um, I'll even add, I don't know how many people listen to DeRay's interview Ugh. with Katie Perry to this. You know, it was. It is going to be and, part and of listen, our main I, conversation. I don't think. I don't think there's anything wrong with plumbing your own depth and trying to figure it out and maybe not even being in a place. But I guess what I would like to say is I think that these reactions sort of make me understand how we get to your president sitting at a table of like genuine required genuflection and nobody thinks anything is wrong. And that's because people feel like it's okay for these like random, they don't want to do the heavy lifting. Like you want me to forgive you for a slip or an error, but it's not really an error because you don't want to examine like, well, why am I so opposed to a woman only showing? Why am I so opposed to, um, you know, ice cube saying that I act like a redneck trucker when Mm -hmm. in fact, that's how I talk. You know, I don't want to think about myself because I already cast myself as like this racial superhero or this feminist superhero. And I don't want anyone to challenge it. And so for me, I feel like it was just the low where the low was 
realizing how many of these people there are, you know, so the people who are like, oh, it was a mistake that you interrupted Kamala, but not inherently you're just racist and you need to re-examine that. So I don't know, maybe it's my own self-awareness. So that was my low, um, cause, and I felt like it was repeated often last week. Um, but my high, um, and it was almost the Black Panther, but I'm going to go ahead and go with Comey. I know this barely fits into the week. Um, I have not, I'm not a fan of his. I don't even necessarily really like him, but I will say um, watching him sit there and be, people have said emasculated, and I don't think that's exactly the word, but accused of not doing enough to defend himself against something that should never happen. I just thought he really comported himself with dignity and people are saying that it's not going to help. And I don't know about the, I don't really know if, impeachment is the option that people are saying it is although you know if it goes all i mean i'd rather honestly even spineless ryan i'd rather you know go all the way down there but whatever i don't know where we're going to end up but i like seeing it it felt like a direct slap in the face it felt like um the first real stand-up moment and then compared with jeff sessions it was just a breath of fresh air so that's my that's going to be my high okay i liked it too and I feel similarly. I don't quite know how to how I feel. Well, I don't have positive feelings towards him or negative. I'm kind of ambivalent. But I did think, especially by comparison to Sessions, he did comport himself well. At least well. he actually answered you know, some questions. Actually, I mean, answered. I was just going to say he answered the questions instead of clutching his pearls and being nervous and talking about he was nervous because the black lady was asking him <laughs> the questions. <laughs> And tap dancing all around anything that had to do with a yes or a no for an inordinate mm-hmm. amount of time. Um, <clears throat> but he, he also started with that um, 45 is a lying liar who lies, which was my favorite moment in the entire, <laughs> in the entire thing. <laughs> yes, you're a liar. <laughs> you deserve a rotten hell. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> um, Sorry, Alex. My, so my low is kind of specific to today. And just has to do with all of the shootings and stuff that are going on. You know, there was um, San Francisco, some violence at a UPS station, Mm -hmm. warehouse, Mm -hmm. or whatever, uh, Mm -hmm. distribution center. There was, on my way home, I saw a report that there was an active shooting at Travis Air Force Base where I used to Mm -hmm. live and where my parents go all the time. Um, I wasn't able to get any more information before, you know, we started with this, but you know, um, I'll throw in just because it's topical, the shooting of the politicians while they were at softball practice. And while I do not advocate violence against anyone ever, I am less than perturbed. I'm far less perturbed by that than I am the other two incidences for reasons I won't comment on for the sake of brevity. That was my low. Just things just feel kind of crazy and feverishly crazy. People feel feverishly crazy um, in spurts. I know the moon was just full, but damn. It's, ugh. Um, can I, I'm sorry. Can I just peep in and say that something I saw on Twitter was that 30 people got shot today in the United States? Shot. And none of those are <laughs> Because, you know, when you talk to gun advocates and you throw out those figures, I always want to throw in what parts of it were suicide, you know, so that murders, do we know, or just guns, friends, because guns aren't bad. Yeah, no, I don't know the details. I just know gun, gun violence. Shot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My high is personal. So my high, the girl came by my office today and brought me lunch and flowers because she's a good kid and also because she's leaving going on vacation in Hawaii and I told her I had to put my eyes on her before she left this state because I just did you don't go get on a plane and fly far and I don't see you first so that was nice I spent lovely time with her at lunch and then one of my beloved friends from book club told me about this book a couple of weeks ago by Elizabeth Gilbert friends yeah I think we talked about this big magic So Mm -hmm. she sent it to me um, as a means of encouraging me creatively. And it's called Big Magic, 
creative living beyond fear. I got it yesterday. I just barely cracked it open, but I already really, really love it. I love it. I feel like she's talking specifically to me. So, you know, in terms of kind of trying to pay attention to my personal creative self and do some things I've been talking about doing forever. I'm hoping that this book will be yet another nudge because I keep getting them um, in the right direction. So that made me happy. Um, yeah, it was, a, it's a, it was a good day today. Good, good lunch, good book. So Those are good high. things. Yeah, they are. they are. Hey, fellow tacklers. We thank you so much for listening to our show. If you're interested in supporting us, we would be ever so grateful. You can donate to the Tackling Tom Foolery podcast at patreon.com backslash Tackling Tom Foolery. So t- today we are going to be um, actually talking along the lines of what Franzi was mentioning as her low. We're going to be talking, you need to cut it. And it's about abdicating allies because sometimes, you know, a person says he or she is an ally and he or she really is not that. And it needs to be let go. It needs to be ended. Um, So first. First, I want to just address just the idea of whether or not we even believe in the idea of an ally when it comes to, I don't know, race and racial progress. Franzi, do you even believe in allies? I do. And I know that this is something that um, Bryn and I pretty briefly talked about, but I do because I think that there's, there, I think it acknowledges separate camps and I think it acknowledges privilege. And I think that it, it referring to myself as an ally in fights that are not my own, except by nature of my desire for all people to be equal, I think helps me understand the role that I play. You know, like I think categorizing myself that way for me helps. And I think so if I'm talking about, you know, an indigenous matter, then I need to remember that despite what, you know, all people say and what maybe even is actually true about my bloodline, that is not um, I am a I am support in that fight. So I have a you know, and maybe that's not a good example, but I think I think, for example, um, when you are talking to a homophobe, you know, Mm -hmm. then I think. Or something, something like that pops up. It is my. It's important for me to to represent and to equalize, or you know, to try to neutralize something that's happening. But it also is important for me to not um, speak like it's mine, like that Abercrombie and Fitch thing, where they're like, "Pride belongs to all of us," and no, 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 that's not how that's not how that works. Wait, are they? Wait, wait, wait. Was this a reference to? Like this being Pride Month? Yes. Oh, and it belongs to all of us. So not the people on that spectrum, not the LGBTQ people. It doesn't belong to just them. It's all of us. It's for all of us. Yeah, it's for all of us. So they're just going to go ahead and diminish the relevance of it being Pride Month by indicating that. Well, what about what about us um, cishet? Doesn't it belong to us too? Oh, I didn't know that. That's no. Well, Malika, I suffer a lot of discrimination because people are like, <laughs> you're straight. Um, so why do you have to talk about your sex life at work? That happens to me all the time. And I really feel like I should be included. I know exactly <laughs> how you feel. People are so in my business and resentful of my cisgendered heterosexuality. Yeah, I, I barely got the job I have. I thought they weren't going to give it to me. Yeah foolishness i didn't that's a commercial yeah i haven't seen um that. i just see so sorry newsflash you know i'm newly paying attention to twitter and it, for all the reasons i said i shouldn't start 
I've started. So I get these articles all the time where I'm like, what? So I'm always yeah. mad, but I'll yeah. see if I can find it and I'll bring it back up. That is a mess. So what about you, AM? Do you subscribe to the idea of allies? Do you think um, they're real? <laughs> is it a genuine thing that there are allies? Um, I do. I believe that allyship is a real thing, but I do believe it's tricky. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, and, and my perspective about this has changed over probably the last couple of years, like I used to totally and fully believe it. Um, like think like people like Tim Wise were the best thing ever in the world because mm-hmm. he got it, et cetera, et cetera. And I still appreciate Tim Wise, but there's a way where, and I, I appreciate him, but I'm going to use him for an example. When I say it's kind of tricky, I mean, I feel like there's a difference between it being an ally, realizing what the issues are, acknowledging them and supporting them in any way, and then being someone for whom that's kind of your shtick, that's yeah. your bread and butter, that's yeah. your thing. I, I, I have come to side eye mm-hmm. it a little bit, and I don't, I don't really know why. There just became a point where. I was probably on his Facebook page one day and he was going off about something that was a real thing. But I just got this funny feeling in my stomach, kind of like it just didn't like literally did not sit well with me, did not settle well. In my spirit, even. And since then, I have felt a kind of distance kind of from some people who are. This is just going to sound so fucked up, but I cannot think of another way to put it. Who are too vociferous in their in their allyship Too like it's. Yeah, I can't I cannot really give probably the right words to it. Um, So to, to go back there, there are some ways where I think there's a fine line that people tread. And as I Franzi kind of spoke on. I believe in allyship because I consider myself an ally to certain groups that I am not a part of. Um, It doesn't mean marching or doing anything overtly political for me or truly political. It just means that I see you. I hear you. I understand um, that you that there are struggles that are unique to your group and your people. Mm -hmm. And um, I support your desire and your right to you know make those issues known and and resolve Mm -hmm. them you know what i mean um i try very very much to not dismiss folks who bring up you know who talk about the issues within their group Mm -hmm. simply because it's not my group and i don't have those issues Mm -hmm. um so because I consider myself or like to consider myself an ally on some levels to other groups and that it would feel dishonest of me or, or somehow hypocritical of me to not also believe that there can be allies to and for us. I think when it comes to people like Tim Wise, what I find and I mostly like him he's he's fine but Mm -hmm. my issue tends to be with people like him white people like him Mm -hmm. who primarily speak on black issues and issues for other brown people whatever is I find it to a certain extent to be exploitative I find this man is literally eating off my pain and so that for me is where it gets sometimes upsetting because he pays his mortgage and feeds his kids and buys gifts for his wife off my pain that's literally how he makes his money I don't think he's necessarily exploiting my pain as a black person but if 
if we did not exist within, you know, some racially oppressive confines, then he wouldn't have anything to talk about. He wouldn't be going around um, lecturing or writing books or whatever, um, at least not about that, because it, w- it wouldn't exist. So if not for this uh, suffering, so to speak, he would not be eating the Cheddar Bay Biscuit. So I, I just kind of... Um, <laughs> when I think about it in that way, then sometimes I feel bothered. And then there's such passion as you were saying, when people are so vociferous about it, what there's sometimes there's such passion as if that person knows what this is um, or, or knows how this feels. And I think as an ally, if one subscribes to the idea of allies, I think it's important to sort of know one's place and there's a difference between acknowledging and understanding someone else's struggle and behaving in such a way as if you think that you too are in that same struggle. And I I, I think sometimes people get, I don't know, maybe there's just like overly familiar um, and perhaps take some liberties because they've taken time to learn some things and research some things and talk to some people. And sometimes that makes people maybe too comfortable. Um, So in a way where they think they are one of whoever it is they're advocating for, instead of just seeing themselves as someone who sees there's a problem and wants to see how they can help. So. Um, as far as the idea of allies, I mean, meh, I think for me, maybe it's just a syntax thing. Maybe I just don't want to call people allies, but <laughs> I'd rather they just be people, decent people who know what's up. Um, allies, I don't know, some kind of way that makes me feel like I'm some um, victim and I'm waiting for the superhero, the ally to come help me and save me. So for me, I think it's just a syntax thing and it feels weird and I don't really love that word. But I do mm. believe there are people who are in the know, who are ready to help when and where they can, willing to advocate when and where they can, where their voices can do the most. And um, I, I respect that. I just don't know if I want to call them allies. I don't know. Something about that word makes me feel something I don't like. Yeah. I, I think that your opinions are really interesting and I really would encourage you to sort of plumb them because there's, and I think both of you are saying there's a general feeling that I've, you know, you feel away, but there's a lack of specificity in the conversation around it. So it's hard to discuss. Um, but for me, I feel, I feel confused because I don't know what it is that we want people to do because I think Tim Tim mm. Wise to me is an example of someone who you're right. He does get very, um, you might even call it soapboxy. And I think to me, mm-hmm. to me, it's hard for people like he's like anybody who's passionate about the rights of people. Um, and I think that I think it must be really hard to be white and passionate about rights because there are so many times when the, when a white person is required to choose between saying something or, or not, or he, you know, will hear something that we would never hear. And I feel like it does sort of put you in a place where you're like, you guys are full of like, it's crazy. So to me, it's like Tim Wise, his mission is mostly to like when you see him speaking, he's mostly talking to white people. And I feel like that's Mm -hmm. the best thing that white people can do is take the message, go communicate it. I don't feel a way about, I don't feel as though the message is wrong and I don't mind him making a living doing it any more than I mind a court 
translator making a living off of relaying someone's painful testimony or in a black Michael Eric Dyson. I mean, I'd rather have Tim Wise making money than Michael Eric Dyson, because at least Tim Wise and I have more in common in terms of our belief system. So it's interesting to me to hear it. And I have heard people say they feel like and like I understand resentment when a white person or a non person of color and or non minority in some way is listened to more than the person in the minority group. I guess I that's what I, I, was mm-hmm. I understand about. that yeah. from a perspective, but I also think there's a real place for that. Like I think I don't want to ever talk to white people about racism. Like I I never want to do it because I don't feel like I'm. I don't feel like I, this. It's not my. I don't even feel like it's my role. Like I'm not creating this for you. You are. You are born. We're all born in it. You have to figure out how to get it out. I don't want to answer questions. I don't want to be a guide. And if these people are willing to do the hard work, I'm all for it. So, are you saying he's kind of like a person like Tim Wise? This sort of like, like, like Luther on Key and Peele, like the race translator, <laughs> yeah. except you know, except in reverse, while you're like. <laughs> Then Tim Wise comes and is like, so what the problems we have are kind of yes. like that. Is He's that what you're a saying? racial missionary. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for, you know, I, I don't, I actually hadn't thought about it in terms of he's making money off of our pain, but I have thought about it in terms of, I don't. I would like for us to be able to talk about our lived experiences and them be heard from our mouths, as Mm -hmm. opposed to from someone like Tim Wise that I, I would like it if it, what we say doesn't, isn't Mm -hmm. validated, doesn't have to be validated by Mm -hmm. a white person. Um, but that's not Tim but Wise's fault. I also no, it's not. I Tim don't Wise's think it's fault, Tim Wise's it fault. I don't think away. it's Tim Wise's fault either. Not, but I do think it is the responsibility of someone like Tim Wise to talk about that too. And I'm not going to say he I'm never not does, saying but that it's his um, fault. I just think if he if he's going to talk what he talk and what he says is. To me, I've never find, found it to be untrue. It's not that I just dislike him. I don't just dislike him. I think I, but I do think if he's going to talk about what he talks about and sort of relay what he knows of our experiences, at, mostly as Black people, because he's mostly talks about Black people, um, if he's going to do that, then I think he also needs to give a voice to the people he's talking about. Um, and not just it be about him all the time. I, I think um, there's, I think if he's going to be who he is, I think there's a responsibility, I, I feel, um, to not just what be all like about him like? and his whiteness and his white man, um, white manness, whatever. And that I just said, I think he needs to give a voice to the people he's speaking about. I just said that. No, well, I'm asking you what that looks like. What is? What I don't think mean? I can I make it any clearer than calm. that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. I can make I that mean, any clearer. Are we suggesting that he doesn't do that? Because I feel like you often see him with other people on the dais. He's all, he often speaks with other people. Are you talking um, about in his, when he... I when he post, put something on Facebook, what is that? I'm I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just asking. I didn't think you were. What I'm does saying that look like. Well, I, it's exactly that, Franzi. I think it's exactly about giving voice to the people, including the people you're talking about, as an expert on sort of race, racism, white privilege. Um, then give voice to the people that you say you are sort of um, speaking for and representing, let them speak sometimes. I've seen him, yeah, on panels with other people, but they weren't people he brought. He was just on a panel, a diverse panel. So it had nothing to do with him. He was just included. I have 
Um, like I've seen him introduce people and say, this is someone that I spoke with. Like, this is this is something that happened. And here's the person that this happened with. But I think we kind of fundamentally disagree about his mission. Like, I don't feel like his job is to represent me. I feel like his job is representing him. Like, I feel like, you know, how those people go and talk to the former rapists, go and talk to, you know, rapists about, you know, recidivism and like inclination and um, that kind of thing. I'm not a rapist. And, you know, I'm not even a person who's been raped, but I'm saying the that person doesn't have anything to do with the victim or the penal system. That person is talking about reforming your thought process. And I don't feel like I'm part of the white supremacist thought process. And so I think maybe that's part of where we disagree. That's OK. I just don't see it that way. And I don't see those as being. <laughs> that's what we disagree. And I don't I don't see those. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And I don't see those as the same thing either. I don't see, you know, a rapist talking to other rapists uh, as the same thing. So, But is, aren't they both pathologies? Aren't, isn't it saying you this is where you come from? This is how your mind is skewed. And so here's the pl- here's the way that you have to reinvent it. And I'm not an expert on white pe- what white people do when they have to reinvent their lives or coming back from being racist. I not only am I not an expert, I haven't exper- I haven't experienced it. And so I would not presume and, and I haven't studied it. So I would not presume to be the person having the conversation. And that's the conversation I feel he's having. I think he has conversation about more than just that. And I think oftentimes I have found he speaks from a perspective of uh, purporting to understand what it's like on this end of things. And I'm not saying he, I'm, I know he does his homework. That's clear to me. Uh, but I think more than just saying, I know these people might be more likely to listen to me because I am a white man. So other white people are more likely to listen to me, um, which is great, but use that as the end so that they can hear other voices too. I would like that better. That would work better for me. It would make me feel like uh, providing less of a side eye some at times when it comes to him. I have no problem with his general message at all. I've gone to hear him speak. I think he's great. Uh, I, I, it's not uh, just an overall dislike or disdain for him. It's just that I think people who are sort of fall within the area of being an ally have certain obligations and certain parameters in which I think they should operate. I'm not going to, if I want to advocate advocate for LGBTQ people, I'm not going to come in there like I'm one of them. I, I'm not on that. I, I'm not anywhere in that group. But I, I, you know, I'm all for fairness and equality and basic just right and people not being bashed or discriminated against and that type of thing. So, but I would not try to over familiarize myself with them in a way where I behave as if I think I know all about their experiences. Cause I don't know that that's not that. Cause that's not who I am. So I just think there's, there are some ways in which my ideas of boundaries are overstepped at times when it comes to Kim and, you know, kind of people sort of in his peer group. So at times I feel bothered but it isn't uh like i said it isn't an issue of whether or not i think they're speaking a truth because i do think they're speaking a truth i just think there's more to how they should be um handling their message and again for me you know you ask the question of what do we want white people to do (laughs) i don't i'm not suggesting there be no white people who speak out against white privilege or inequality of some sort that doesn't have anything to do with them. That's not at all my suggestion. Um, I think any human being with decency should speak out whether it's 
uh, they're a person who speaks out to large crowds or if it's a person just talking to their family members and friends. I think we all have an obligation to combat, you know, bullshit when we see it. Um, so it's not an issue of, oh, I want you to be some kind of unreasonably perfect being in order to deliver your message. Um, it's, it's not that for me. It's just that I think it needs to be more than just me, him, and his whiteness saying what, you know, speaking his message and that being it. I think there should be more to it. Yeah, I don't, like I said, I don't mind him. I don't have a problem with him, at least not outside of what I already said, and that's kind of intangible. Um, But, Mm -hmm. and so, you know, when I say that it bothers me sometimes that the truth has to be heard or is more palatable coming from someone like Tim Wise, that's not an indictment of him as much as it is just uh, giving voice to frustration that arises sometimes when I feel like we can't validate our own experiences. And I have this happen somewhat regularly online. So I was really thinking more Mm -hmm. along those Mm -hmm. lines. And I mean, I know people who won't follow, um, love life of an Asian guy because they feel like he does too much. And we're not talking about a white person. We're talking about Mm -hmm. a person of color, but because he's not Mm -hmm. black and he talks about issues Mm -hmm. pertaining to the black community. I mean, I've seen, I've seen that cat get dragged, you know? Um, I have. So, and I don't, I don't, I don't have a problem with him in the same way I don't have a problem with Tim Wise, but I also don't necessarily hang on every word he says. In part for him, sometimes stylistically, the way that he writes is annoying to me sometimes. It's kind of a nah, 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 mm-hmm. that I have to get past to mm-hmm. get to the crux of what he's saying before I can be like, that's right, that's right. Um, so, I mean, to clarify, I think I, the, the way that I feel about allyship isn't even just, and the way I think a lot of people feel about it, isn't just, isn't, doesn't simply pertain to white people. It pertains to anybody who's not black. You know what I mean? And anybody who spends mm-hmm. a lot of time talking about issues as they pertain to black folks. I don't mind someone bringing it to light. I really don't. I don't mm-hmm. mind someone being supportive because God knows what what's the alternative that only we talk about it. And you don't know if anybody right. gets it at all. Is that the alternative? Because I don't want that shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess as I'm the more I talk, the clearer it becomes to me that it is a very tricky issue for me. I, I do appreciate being mm-hmm. understood and heard um, and and respected for the things that I say are happening or have happened or the things that are true. I do. Um, It just, there are ways where it's, it's tricky. I wish it wasn't. I would prefer it not to be, but it is. Life would Mm -hmm. be much, yeah, life would be much simpler were it not. And I I (laughs) love life of an Asian guy. Yeah. He has been pounded. Yeah. (laughs) pummeled i mean injured um with conversation and i hmm, i don't always agree with necessarily the people who come for him but every now and then i'm like i kind of see what they mean yeah maybe their their approach is not the way i would approach him or approach his his um words but sometimes i do understand Mm -hmm. where his his haters, so to speak, are coming from. Sometimes it makes sense. Yeah. So when it comes to allyship and that sort of the group of black folks who are like, we don't need you. Get out of here. (laughs) Are those people, do you guys think those people are just being mean? 
Or do you think there's some validity to what they're saying? I don't think either. I don't think it's mean. I can't say that there's no validity to it. I I just don't quite understand it. Um, Again, what we don't want anybody talking about our shit, but us, we don't want anybody to understand. I don't know how we, and I am not talking about white approval. Okay. I'm not talking about once the white people tell us they understand and it's okay, then everything will be fine. I don't mean that, but if what we are, what are, what we're seeking always is parity and equality and to Mm -hmm. not be seen as a uh, inherently violent, um, uneducated, uh, not ambitious, no family structure having people. Um, I don't know what's wrong with giving access to a degree to Mm -hmm. folks who don't look like us. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's mean. I think that people who feel that way, you know, legitimately feel that way. And I'm sure if you ask them, they would have a rationale for it. Um, Mm -hmm. That isn't about them being mean spirited, you know. Um, It's just not how I personally view it or how I'm going to roll. I don't feel like what we can, what we, I don't feel like reeling against systemic racism and oppression is alleviated or made better by being exclusionary to a fault. I don't. Right. And and, that that doesn't work for me. As 13% of the population, I mean, if we want to get something done, you know, on a political level, it can't really happen without people who aren't black being right. on the same page. So I, like I said, I, I think it's the obligation of any person, any decent, smart person to speak up, you know, speak up at home, speak up on a larger platform if that's how you uh, get down do but I, I think it's I think it's the obligation of everyone to do that um, but I, I just think it's also an obligation to be respectful in the way it's done I guess that's uh, the crux of it for me yeah Franzi Franzi you brought up Katy Perry earlier um, in the conversation that's what did moment. you think of of that interview with uh she and well with DeRay interviewing her what did you think in terms of her acknowledging I guess times that she's been culturally out of pocket (laughs) Mm. Mm. I like it that she is open enough to talk about it I like it that Mm -hmm. she was willing to go on the podcast with him um uh, he handled her with kid gloves largely I think because of their associations, you know, they have the friend in common that they talked about. But I felt like there were so many, res- I mean, she was kind of Jeff Sessions about it, wasn't she? It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I was <laughs> wrong because I didn't understand. And never in mm-hmm. the conversation did I feel like she demonstrated a real understanding. It was like, mm-hmm. yes, I was taking a task on this thing. And then I did virtually the same thing, but I didn't understand that it applied to not just black people, but Asian people right. too. And then (laughs) I said, I asked for forgiveness. And then I didn't realize that. And so for me, it's like, you know, it kind of goes back to what I said in the highs and lows. And that is, yeah, every, there's a learning curve. And I Mm -hmm. think we, we now life has pushed people of color and minority groups to the point where there's very little forgiveness for true learning curve, you know, but you Mm -hmm. can't just keep messing up i mean what are you learning like it's like you you say that you learned this lesson but you're not able to use that information in the next situation and so it's like right 
I, what what's really happening? And I felt like he was very, very permissive. And in truth, the thing that excited me most about that whole house thing was um, homegirl talking to Caitlyn Jenner, giving her the one, two. And I was like, oh, yes, she gave it to her. Thing. She really she did. What's her to. name? Um, Amanda Seals. Yes. Is it? I okay. think that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. You know what? Someone sent me a clip of that. I did not <laughs> know what I was looking at. <laughs> All I know was one of my one of my Facebook friends sent it to me and I watched it. No, on Instagram. I watched it first thing this morning and I wa- I was like, wait, wait, wait. Watched it again and I and told my friend who sent it to me, I was like, I don't know who this is. But she was out there telling all them truths. All the truths. All mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of them. That's how I started off my day. Mm-hmm. I almost hopped out of the bed and just did some finger snaps, like some men on Man. film finger snaps. <laughs> Man. Because I tell she you. wasn't telling it. And I didn't see and the Katy Perry DeRay um, interview. I only read one little write-up about it. And under my what they said was that, and I need you guys to tell me if this was your perception. They said, she said, um, basically like, I didn't know, but don't be mean to me because I didn't know. I mean, just kind of be like, yeah, hey, you know, and that, yes, yes. And that is what I wanted to kind of talk about with you guys next um, is. I mean, there, there's some audacity connected to demanding the way in which people should educate you about the way you offend or disrespect them. Uh, I want you to correct me if I'm out of pocket where you're concerned, but I only want you to say it this way. I don't want you to say it in such a way where my feelings are hurt. They don't give a damn if your feelings are hurt. (laughs) They don't give a damn if you were disrespected. They don't give a damn if you felt somehow oppressed or or whatever by the situation damn your feelings just protect me the offender give it to me softly and in the vein of loving kindness and friendship because that's the only way i'm willing to accept it so if you give it to me too straight then i won't listen to you i'll just keep disrespecting you (laughs) i'll just keep co-opting your culture or exploiting you in some way because you've said it in a way I don't I don't like I mean just like the audacity of that um she didn't I I did watch and read the verbiage and I want to say she was kind of like um when my friend told me she told me in such a way like that was kind So it was more like she was indicating that's how the rest of you should do. If you have something to say to me or any other person who does something culturally disrespectful, just say it to me nicely, even though what I did to you was unkind. (laughs) So I read this think piece a while back by this woman, a white woman, and she was talking about how, you know, she used to not believe white privilege was a thing. She used to. Like her understanding of race relations and blackness and all of that was Mm -hmm. um, rudimentary. And then she started inhabiting certain spaces online. And over over time, she kind of, you know, gained a broader understanding. Um, But one of the things that she said that stuck with me was the way that information began to kind of penetrate get through to her was when someone and it seemed to me she was either on message board you know reddit facebook groups whatever Mm -hmm. the the thing that would penetrate with her would be when someone would politely kind of kindly explain and patiently explain Uh things the people who were angry and like really insistent And all of that were not the people who um, got her attention. Those weren't the people that she learned from. And, you know, as someone who spends a lot of time in in this kind of arena, that struck me for a minute. Because I'm not that kind person necessarily. 
And I thought, well, Mm -hmm. you know, if one of the things I consider myself to be doing is putting facts and truth out there and, 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 and ideally someone will get it at some point, then Mm -hmm. I should probably rethink my perspective. I should probably rethink my approach. And then it occurred to me that what we're asked to do is not cause pain or discomfort right? in talking about our pain and mm-hmm. discomfort. Mm-hmm. Historically, systemically, unto today. So you're asking me to be nice to you yes. when I'm talking about something yeah. that is very painful to right. me. And I've had one-on-one conversations with at least one person in a series of conversations who really wanted Like she earnestly wanted to get it, but she in the very fiber of her being did not. And Mm -hmm. so I would explain something. And to me, what she would do felt like it felt like it was pushback. And I told her, I said, I can't keep talking to you about these things when you have when you I feel like you keep pushing back. And she was like, no, I'm not. But I just. Such a, just please be patient with me. I, I talk to you because, you know, I know you'll be patient and, you, and you'll be, because I do really, really like her. She's a really good people. On this topic, though, I just, I had to, I was like, okay, we have to stop now. We have to stop. And at, and I didn't think of it in the way that I thought of it after I wrote, I read that think piece, but really, it's so, presumptuous and self-centered and mm-hmm. disrespectful and mm-hmm. and and insulting to actually give voice to the expectation that I center you and your mm-hmm. feelings so that you it's almost like what you want fucking 45 minutes of foreplay when you said I said I wanted a quickie I don't have time Right. I don't have yeah. time. That's not the best analogy, but you guys know what I mean. I don't mm-hmm. have who I don't have time for all that. You you but want this information, I'm gonna give you this information. You're gonna get it. Do with it what you will. You but ask. isn't this why you need an ambassador? Like to me, this is the role of an ally. I cannot talk to you. You need to talk to someone who's already done this process because they're gonna be patient with you. Whereas I don't have you're so sensitive that the king of Wakanda, which is not a real place, sitting in a throne, <laughs> makes you lose your mind on the internet, and you want me to talk to you repeatedly about why watching why I can't be teehee in the office after black dudes got sh- that what like three people got shot by the police, and none of those police are going to jail, and you know it, and I know it. I can't do it, and I just want to say I got a little worked up, but I'm getting it down together. <laughs> Here's, here's my, bottom, my bottom line really is that, and this does not mean I, I ha- I've already told you I have a very close white friend. I love her. And that's sort of cheating because her experience is different. So we don't have to overcome those issues. But mm-hmm. I, there are white people in my life whom I love. So I'm not saying that I don't have them, but generally speaking, I think they need to be their own allies. Like people who are recovering mm-hmm. racists need to be their own allies. They need to seek their mm-hmm. own understanding. And honestly, I don't want to help them do that. And really part of that is my nature because there's really no part of my life where I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be the person trying to convince the person to <laughs> um, catch the train or guide you to it. No, you can have, you can see this flyer that I posted. And if you want to get on the train, you are all about it, but I'm getting on that train and going to freedom and I'm not wasting my time proselytizing because I don't care if you don't want to be free I don't care but there are people like I'll just say Tim Wise or my daddy like my daddy will talk to sad sack people who are prevaricating about like do I want to be free or whatever like he'll talk to them until doomsday because he just has infinite patience for like excuses and tomfoolery and that's just not my business and so I feel like that may be why I'm so stridently opposed to having those conversations period you need to Google, you need to read, you need to really decide that this is something you want to do. And you're not doing me a favor. You do, you're doing yourself and your kids a favor. So. Right. right. See, so yes, well, I I'm calm down, but I got head up again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one who's ever really been um, big on educating whoever, educating the Katy Perry's. 
of the world. I, I just, I just don't. Um, the only things I really entertain are simple questions from non-black people I know. If they have a, okay, I got a perfect example. I had a friend who's a DJ and he was making a mixtape of um, movies from, uh, of songs from black exploitation soundtrack. Um, he um, digs that genre and he wanted to make a mixtape of that sound. And so he messaged me and was like, okay, I'm almost done with this mix. And he's like, I want to put something about black exploitation in the title. Is that insensitive of me? You know, those are the kind of questions I can entertain because I know this man already knows some things, the basic things he needs to know. Right. So he's asking me about something specific, not just what do you mean by privilege? I mean, we're not having that conversation. He already knows that stuff. He's just asking me about this particular thing because he didn't want to offend his audience or feel like he was disrespecting his audience. Those are the kind of conversations I will have or the kind of questions I will give my opinion on. But the whole, I don't get any of it. Please explain it to me and explain it to me sweetly in a way that doesn't hurt my white feelings. I don't do those. I don't have any interest in, why should I? Why should I do that? That's just not for me. And Franzi, I'm not saying there's no need for Tim Wise. I never said that. I I think he has a purpose. Um, that's That's not what I'm saying at all when it comes to him. I think they're, like I said, I think everybody has an obligation to open their mouths um, when it comes to stuff like this. And usually people are better off or best at opening their mouths to the people who are like them. So it's not that I think there's no purpose for him. Uh, Yeah, he serves a purpose. So. I know I don't currently have any white friends with whom the current political climate poses an issue for Mm -hmm. our friendship because they're white and I'm black. Um, Yeah. I wonder, though, if I did, you know, I... And I, you know, I, I don't have even, you know how you have your work homies, not even the work homies. The one that I talk to about politics is a liberal, but you know how liberals get older and they come a little bit more center. She's Mm. that kind of liberal horrified by Trump, but not like a hard died in the wool liberal. Um, I, I am, I guess I'm fortunate in that. Well, we, I don't. I just don't have those people. And I feel like, I feel like if I had someone, if I was friends with someone who turned out to be white folks, Ashy, I yeah. would have been able to determine that. Mm-hmm. Um, sometime, I want to say relatively early in. Right. So I don't, sure. A, don't know how close we would have been in the first place. Right. Um, and yeah, I just don't know how that relationship would have thrived. I can imagine mm-hmm. though having acquaintances who kind of come out and you're like, wait, what? Mm-hmm. And in which case, I, you know, I'm good. I don't, you know, we were talking about when do you end it? When you mm-hmm. feel, to me, it's when you feel like that's what, what, that's what it's time for. You know what I'm saying? Yep. When you mm-hmm. feel like, mm, that, <coughs> I'm sorry, that first kind of, Maybe not the first one, but when you, I think the first time you're like, you know what? I don't, you really have a, I don't know if this relationship is tenable. I don't know. It might be time when it comes Mm -hmm. to this kind of thing. Cause I will tell Mm -hmm. you, I don't have any room or space 
for 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 someone who doesn't understand my black ass life. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, 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 I don't have room or space for someone who thinks I'm different than other black people in some kind of way. So I, 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 I don't have room for people who don't. And I just I, I, I'm, I was about to go on a friend's tangent. I was about to feel <laughs> it and get into it. But yeah, I just I don't know. And I feel but I feel bad for people who have relationships that were close. Mm-hmm. And then a thing happens or gets said and they realize that's hurtful. That is, mm-hmm. that's, that's a hurtful place to be. And I, I, I sympathize with people who are in that situation. And I do know that there are a lot of broken relationships behind all of the things that are going on now. And it is unfortunate, but you better, you know, at some point. Right. Franzi, when do you cut it? I don't really feel like this is an issue for me. I agree with Alicia. Um, and, but I think, Sort of continuing on or piggybacking on what we talked about last week. I think I just have my antenna are more developed than that. I don't think I've Mm -hmm. caught myself being surprised. And I think when my lack of patience ratcheted up a notch, you know, I had Mm -hmm. several very frank conversations. I'm going to tell all of my truth. Now we can not talk about it because it makes it's easier for you or we can talk about it. But what's not going to happen is I'm not going to sit here and not tell you what I think. Right. So either you want to know or you don't. And I think, um, you know, and obviously those are just, you know, people that I kind of activity people, but mm-hmm. I don't feel like I get surprised like that. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm not that tolerant when remember that thing with the guy where he, <laughs> they he and his girlfriend broke up and then she posted something really inappropriate about the kid's hair you know and started oh using all, yes and it's like you yes. know what that's something that would never happen to me you know why mm-hmm. because before she did that she did about 11 other things just like that um girl whose boyfriend beat her up after the election you yeah. already knew you already knew where exactly. he was or you should have known right. and so for me that's it's right. like it's not right and i'm not saying i condone it but that's your business mm. yeah yeah I, I don't think I've ever really been shocked and I am very particular about who I interact with. So when to cut it, I mean, for me, it rarely even ever starts for me to cut it. But hypothetically, I'd cut it at the moment I see you don't understand mm-hmm. and don't want to. Then I'm I'm not going to beg you to understand and I'm not going to say just consider what I'm saying. I'm just going to be done. So. If if I ever had a situation where I had to cut it, that's where it would end for me. The moment I know you don't know and don't wish to know. You know, um, what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to go into our shout out. Uh, but Alicia, did you have a final thought? Yes, one final one. I find that the people who have been most shaken, the black people I know who've been the most shaken by the 45 nomination and administration are people who have a very diverse friend pool, you know, Mm. people who Mm -hmm. have a lot of all kinds of friends have been in my experience, the ones who, who's, who seem foundationally shook that we live in a country who would elect someone like Trump. And I thought about that and thinking these to me would be the people who are having the kind of experiences we're talking about. And part Mm -hmm. of why they are still to this day kind of walking around numb, you know, and a little zombified because they just because they have such have had such uh, seemingly easy friendships with people of all backgrounds and ethnicities um, and races. It just they cannot believe that this is a real thing. They they just can't. But I feel like that's their friend's fault because like, remember that thing that, that happened with, was it Sprint? I, one of the telecom companies where they're like, oh, we got everybody together to have a conversation because I wanted to tell you, I have this friend I've known him for 20 years. And just the other day I found out he was black, like, you know, sociologically <laughs> speaking. And it's like, you know what? I, uh, everybody here is to blame. You're stupid for not knowing. And your friend is foul for not telling you. And to me, you, like you weren't that close. If you guys weren't talking about race, you were not that close uh, uh. because those, well, of course I can say there are some people who feel like they're not affected by race too. But generally speaking, if it was a, just a regular person of color, yeah, you guys weren't that close. 
Or honest. Maybe you were very close, but not honest. Like, you know, white and black families in the South. Okay, I'm done. So on to the shout out. Uh, Franzi, do you have a shout out for this week? I have a super shout out. And that my shout out is to Kamala and to Claire, because I just want to say I love seeing women acting like women do when the ish is ridiculous. And I feel like I could convert that into a fake Intozaki um, title if I wanted to. But (laughs) if you have not Hmm. seen those videos of of those two women holding it down, I just think you should because they're basically like WTF and I loved it. Yeah. That's what those they're my yeah. shout outs. All right. AM, excuse me. Damn my incognito status. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one has any idea who you are. They wouldn't. They would not. Yeah. Exactly. Right. You don't have an AM Lewis Facebook page. <laughs> That's exactly what I was about to say. It might Ruth come. Wayne. It might come, maybe. Um, so my shout Strike out that is from the record. shallow and personal. So it's sort of shallow. So um, today, instead of Dr. Teal's, I'm going to shout out this facial brush thing that I got. You know, it's motorized and it has the different heads that you put on it. I bought it two weeks ago. And it is a real thing in my life. I think I'm in love with it. Um, it's still it's still working some things out, but <laughs> some things have been worked out much to my pleasure. I would exhort all the ladies to get this, get some. Mine was mine was twenty dollars. High end was sixty eight dollars. I think seventy five dollars. Low end was twenty dollars. And I'm like, I don't know how much difference there can be in a little thing with a rotating brush going mm-hmm. a cheap route. Um, and I love it. I really, really like it. If you have some exfoliation that you need to do, and also supposedly it helps whatever products you're using seep into your face better, seep into your skin, into your face. I don't know. I dig it. I feel like I'm never, ever going to not use it, and it's making me very happy. And I don't know what brand it was. There's some off-brand, so I can't even plug it. But y'all get y'all some kind of little facial brush and make that magic happen (laughs) in your life people shit men too i was gonna say ladies but men too some of y'all y'all know that's right Clear everybody out. has skin they need to clean okay everybody okay um so this week i am going to shout out amber rose and her snack oh. um <laughs> i oh. was so God. pleased and amused oh by God. her naked picture on instagram that was taken down oh. and amused by her um, well manicured bush because mm. people act like mm. it's a crime to have pubic hair. Like it is some shit that naturally grows out of your mm. body. Like this is what people, ha- grown ass people, have pubic hair. It's okay if you like to remove yours, it's not a problem. But I don't know why it's a federal crime if a woman has some pubic hair. We are not all porn stars, and even some of them have pubic hair. But anyway, shout out to Amber Rose and her snack. Her, she looks good. She's, Mm. you know, she's gorgeous anyway, and she looked great. And she was all oiled up and unbothered, and I, I loved it. I thought the shit was hilarious and amazing. And people were mad, and I saw people editing the picture. Some, (laughs) some old. Ashy ass, whole teppy, unk laden website put like some kind of kente cloth panties on her or whatever and said something like, This is how we would prefer for her to look. Isn't this much better? And that almost made me throw my computer, my work computer, because not my personal shit. I would never. But anyway, um, I loved it. I'm not mad at it. I don't know why women's nakedness is always some kind of crime or cause for uproar, but that's a, a different mm. conversation for a different day. But shout out to Amber Rose and yes, her please. and her slut walk and her snap. I do. And her banging body. Okay. Hell yes, that I'm banging here body. For every bit of it. I saw the picture. And like I literally scrolled down and stopped and was like, whoa. <laughs> is it? 
what? It wasn't a landing strip. She had a full on, beautifully manicured bush. I was here for it because I have forever been pissed at the expectation, not the choice, the expectation is right. that we should be totally waxed and hairless. This shit is painful. Yes. I'm not going to do it. And you know what? Who's is still going to fuck? So stop it. Stop fronting. And this whole yeah. outcry, that's not, ugh. Who is lying if Amber Rose was going to give them some Man. and came to them with her unwaxed vagina? These fools is out here lying out of their asses if there's, if they're like, uh-uh, you need to shit. Bitch. Yeah. Let I me might try to sleep with Amber Rose I'll if she smash. got with me. And I don't even, you know, but I might because she's beautiful and her body's stupid. I'm at least, I'm at least try to touch her booty. So, she, oh yeah, caress and hold. Um, but Absolutely. she's not 13 years old, and that's something that I really, right. I just, this is what I'm saying. We're so entrenched in what has happened mm. in porn that we're yes. like, it's mm-hmm. outrageous that your body looks like it was made. <laughs> oh, <wait>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that, I that, loved that, every that was piece of that moment. She, it was definitely a highlight of my last seven days. Mm. So anyway, thank you so much for listening to Tackling Tomfoolery. I am Malika Rogers. I'm Franzi Moore. And I am Lewis. Bye. Bye. Tackling Tomfoolery is produced by Bryn Inman for Evergreen Talent Collective. For more information, find us on the web at www.tacklingtomfoolery.com, on Facebook at Tackling Tomfoolery, and on Twitter and Instagram. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or SoundCloud, and make sure you rate and review the show as that helps people find us. If you'd like to contact the show, email us at tacklingtomfoolery at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 916-573-1065. Let us know what tomfoolery you're tackling. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.